Hello everyone, welcome back to Onichin. Today I will review for you a very hot part of the movie One Piece. In this part, Luffy's group is invited to the Pirate Festival, where all the most famous pirates in the world gather. They never expected to get caught up in the scheme of a very dangerous individual. He is a legendary pirate known as the Son of a Demon, who is a crew member on the Pirate King Roger's ship. His goal is to eliminate all the powerful pirates and the navy to become the strongest. So Luffy along with Boa Hankook and the others must fight together to stop him. But before that, Luffy's group must battle a group of bounty hunters that continuously shoot lasers at their ship Sunny. Right after Robin and Zoro defeated this group, another group appeared. Much to Luffy's annoyance and wondering where they came from. It turns out that the leader of this group wants to capture Luffy. Because his current bounty is 1.5 billion berries before heading to the pirate festival to defeat the legendary pirate bullet. Luffy's group must deal with the bounty hunters surrounding them. Frankie then powers up the ship using Cola to escape from them. In the end, the party escapes from the bounty hunters, but Sunny takes considerable damage. Robin realizes that they will soon be pursued. Thankfully, Brooke discovers an island, while Chopper is worrying about Sunny running out of Cola. If the enemies find them, they will be in even more trouble, Nami and Frankie discover that the island is full of colas, so Luffy asks Nami for money to buy cola for everyone. Even though Nami knew Luffy just wanted to have fun, she still gave him money to buy cola. When Luffy was enjoying cola and relaxing, a woman came to sell him water but he said that he just wanted to buy cola, the woman guides him to a nearby cola factory, which is under the control of a dangerous gang. When Luffy was on his way to the factory, the bounty hunters reappeared and surrounded him, leading to a fierce fight. Although Luffy fought back, he was shot and fell into a ravine, being carried away by the water. Pirate Queen Boa Hankook was bathing nearby when she was suddenly pressed on top of her by Luffy. Upon seeing Luffy, Hankook immediately fell in love with him. Meanwhile, Cidre, the leader of the bounty hunters, becomes more bloodthirsty and plans to deal with both Luffy and Hankook. Hankook begins to fantasize that Luffy will come to find her. Suddenly, the bounty hunters found them and ambushed them, they attacked Hankook, so Luffy inflated his body like a balloon to shield her from the attack, it turns out that Luffy wants to protect Hankook and prevent the bounty hunters from seeing the slave mark on her back, although Hankook realizes Luffy's intention to protect her, but she must also show her strength, she couldn't appear weak in front of her future husband, this immediately captivated these guys and made them extremely smitten with Hankook, so Luffy immediately attacked them while Hankook turned them to stone with her continuously firing arrows. At this moment, her two sisters arrived, and bring clothes for Hankook to wear. Now only the fat man remains, so he ran out of gas, leaving Hankook unable to breathe. Luffy jumped up and pulled her out, seeing Luffy hold her waist, continuing to captivate Hankook. Luffy keeps her infatuated. The two decided to run towards the enemy base. At this time, she revealed to Luffy, that she was preparing for the infamous pirate festival, an event held every seven years, gathering all the most notorious pirates in the world, with a total bounty exceeding 10 billion belly, Luffy is excited and wants to attend the festival, suddenly, a man named Cidre appeared, he immediately launches an attack on Luffy and Hankook, both of them realize that they have been surrounded, he repeatedly rushed to attack Luffy, but Luffy used hockey to counter his blows, meanwhile, Zoro and Sanji are also surrounded by some enemies, but a group of civilians appeared, claiming that they were forced to fight. While Luffy was still fighting Cidre, a woman steps up to challenge Hancock, ordered the army to attack her, but they were petrified by Hancock's power. However, this woman still believes that her bounty hunter team is the strongest at sea. Hancock then realized their weapons were filled with gas. While Luffy is still fighting Cidre, and Cidre says, a 1.5 billion belly pirate and yet so weak, huh? Luffy gets angry and immediately retaliates, striking him back, when Cidre launches an attack at him, then Luffy inflates his body to block the attack from Cidre, causing Cidre to be knocked back, but Cidre shows no sign of fear or concern, he says he despises those pirates who use devil fruit powers, considering them nothing more than insignificant bugs in this world, it turns out that all of his former crewmates were killed by bullet, since then, he has harbored a deep hatred for pirates with devil fruit powers. At this moment, Hancock also kicks this woman back, making her retreat. Hancock's two sisters also rush in to provide support. Unexpectedly, the enemies regroup and are determined to capture Luffy's group. 
Suddenly, Cidre ordered a retreat, intending to use his secret weapon against them. Luffy chases him and launches rubber rockets at their factory. While the other two were busy with Hancock's sisters, Cidre enters the factory. It turns out that Cidre intends to use this secret weapon to defeat Bullet. However, he decides to have Luffy test the weapon first. As Luffy continued his search for Cidre, he encountered local civilians. It turned out that their family had been taken hostage by Cidre to coerce them into fighting for him. Cidre has secretly put on his armored suit, confidently claiming that his weapons can defeat all the pirates who use devil fruits. He leaps forward and manages to punch Luffy through several walls. Meanwhile, Hankook is fighting with two of Cidre's henchmen outside. Surprisingly, Hancock proves to be very strong, easily taking down one of them with a kick. When this girl also charged, Hankook kicked her, turning her into stone as well. While the situation seems dire for Luffy with Cidre relentlessly attacking, Luffy notices a weakness in Cidre's weapon. Luffy immediately activated gear 2 and rushed forward, delivering a powerful barrage of punches, astonishingly stopping Cidre in his tracks. As Cidre continues to babble about his beliefs, claiming that One Piece doesn't exist and he will eradicate all pirates who use devil fruits, annoyed by Cidre's words, Luffy confidently retorted that he wouldn't be able to defeat any pirates at all. So, Luffy leapt forward and activated Gear 3, delivering a powerful punch straight at Cidre. Even though Cidre tried to resist with all his strength, he was still knocked out by Luffy's punch, and just like that, Luffy emerged victorious in the battle. Suddenly, he saw an invitation to the pirate festival falling down. On the other side, a man named Festa, the organizer of the pirate festival, was very excited because he had learned that Luffy had defeated Cidre and would be attending the event. Festa wanted to witness Luffy's battle with the legendary pirate, Bullet. At this time, Luffy's crew had managed to collect a substantial amount of cola. While Luffy had bid farewell to Boa Hankook, she hadn't had the chance to persuade him to come along before he ran off. However, she knew they would reunite at the pirate festival. Luffy's crew was also surprised when he received invitation to the festival. Robin read the invitation and found out that the festival would be held on Delta Island, where a treasure hunt of the legendary Pirate King, Roger, would take place. This instantly took everyone by surprise. Meanwhile, Festa is thrilled as all the worst generation of pirates are heading to the festival. And there was also Bullet, who was still waiting for them. It turns out that two years ago, Bullet was imprisoned in Impel Down. After Luffy infiltrated Impel Down to find Ace, Blackbeard released all the prisoners from level 6 where the most dangerous criminals in the world were kept, but unexpectedly, there was one individual whom even Blackbeard feared and dared not approach, because he was known by the nickname, The Demon's Son. At this moment, Festa was still astonished by the significance of just one statement from Roger, which had opened up an entire era of pirates. Bullet was also present, alongside Festa. It turned out that Festa had agreed to collaborate with Bullet to prepare for a dangerous plan during the upcoming pirate festival. This festival would be a gathering of all the powerful pirates from around the world. On Luffy's side, the crew had prepared themselves fully and were ready to head to the pirate festival. Seeing Delta Island made Luffy exhilarated. This immediately thrilled the entire group because there was an abundance of delicious food on the island, and, especially, because it was rumored to hold the treasure left behind by Pirate King Roger. While Nami had her doubts about the festival, but Luffy was only interested in searching for the treasure, as for Robin, she already knows, the name Festa belongs to the mastermind behind the most famous festivals in the Grand Line. He is also a notorious arms dealer and a wicked pirate. However, at this moment, Luffy just wants to rush up to the island. As they all arrive on the island, they immediately start enjoying themselves and exploring everything at the festival, which makes Luffy's entire group very thrilled. As for Festa, when he received news that the Straw Hat Pirates had arrived, he was immediately overjoyed and he eagerly used his telescope to search for them, because all the pirates he's been waiting for have fully assembled. At this time, the MC of the festival declares that all pirates are free to fight and loot as they please, but they are not allowed to reveal the location of this place to the marines. It turns out that Festa chose this island because 20 years ago, Pirate King Roger discovered a great treasure here, so, all the pirates participating in this festival will have to go in search of the treasure left behind by Pirate King Roger. While everyone is excitedly searching for the treasure, Law is injured. Meanwhile, Luffy is being scolded by Nami because his excessive eating caused them to depart later than other pirate crews. But at this moment, the entire group remains confident that they will win. On another side, 
Budgie the Clown, Vita, and Mr. Three are still chasing after Law, trying to capture him. It turns out that because Budgie has become one of the seven warlords of the sea, Festa hired him to be the security for the festival. However, Law has uncovered a tremendous secret behind the festival and plans to inform Luffy's group. Unfortunately, he is unexpectedly found by Budgie. So, Law promptly uses his devil fruit power to quickly teleport and escape. On another side, Vice Admiral Smoker and Toshigi have infiltrated the festival. It turns out that their target is to capture Bullet, as he is one of the most ruthless pirates from level 6 of Impel Down. On Luffy's side, they have to break abruptly because ahead of them, there is a colossal water vortex. Unexpectedly, this water vortex shoots a column of water straight into the sky. That surprised Luffy. Suddenly, the water column shoots out numerous bubbles, and an island appears in the sky. So, all the pirates immediately start racing against each other to run up to the island. While Kid is excited about being in the lead, Apu's ship is being attacked by Drake's vessel. Bonnie is still calmly sitting and eating. The mad monk Oros is being attacked by Beiji. Surprisingly, Bartolomeo, Luffy's hardcore fan, and Cavendish are also participating in the race to the treasure island. While Luffy's group is still below, it turns out that Frankie has transformed the Sunny into a penguin to prepare for flying. Suddenly, Budgie appears and demands that they hand Law over to him. Unexpectedly, they were hit by the recoil of the Sunny's attack. As a result, the Sunny immediately flew straight up the water column, surpassing all the other pirate crews. Meanwhile, Festa has found Bullet and tells him that it is time for him to fulfill his ambition. As for Luffy's group, they are currently leading the race. Suddenly, they see Law stepping out. Injured, he tells the entire group, you all must leave here as soon as possible because Festa is hiding an extremely dangerous individual on this island. While Law wants to immediately set out to seek revenge against them, Luffy has decided to continue moving forward and urged Chopper to treat Law's injuries. Seeing that this group is not willing to listen to him, Law has no choice but to stay and cooperate with them. So, they all decided to split up and take action. Laws and Robin's group boarded the submarine and plunged straight into the sea. The group thought their lives were almost over. But luckily, Robin created a pair of wings for the submarine. They were able to safely descend into the sea. They decided to advance straight to Festa's base. Meanwhile, Luffy's group continued their quest to find the treasure. Finally, all the pirates reached the top of the water column and successfully stepped onto the island. To their surprise, they saw a ship filled with a vast amount of treasure right in front of them. So, Luffy's group quickly runs to claim the treasure chest first. Nami notices a mysterious treasure chest and tells Luffy to go and get it. At this moment, all the other pirate crews are racing to get the treasure. Suddenly, Killer lunges to attack Luffy, prompting Zoro to step in and block him. Zoro says, Our captain is busy right now, but it's Apu's turn to attack Luffy when he's about to engage in a battle with Apu. Kid takes this opportunity to dash ahead, and Luffy must immediately chase after Kid. Unexpectedly, Kid is then attacked by Drake. Kid utilizes his devil fruit power to battle against Drake. Luffy also jumps in and uses Gear 3 to attack both of them simultaneously. He continues to maintain his lead position in the race. Luffy continues to stay ahead in the lead. Meanwhile, Beiji's crew is being transformed into children by Bonnie's power. On the other hand, Hawkins' crew is still leisurely sitting and watching fortune-telling. Meanwhile, Usopp and Nami's group are trying to hinder the other pirate crews from reaching the treasure. As Luffy approaches the treasure, he is unexpectedly attacked by the crazy monk. Oros, much to Luffy's excitement as he enjoys facing strong opponents. Even Budgie cannot resist joining in on the treasure hunting game. On the side of Sanji and Law's group, they have successfully infiltrated Festa's stronghold. The whole group was tense and unsure how to search for Festa. So Brooke farted to help relieve the group's stress. Brooke utilized his devil fruit power to transform into a ghost and stealthily infiltrate inside. Eventually, they successfully located Festa. He revealed that Buster Call would be executed at this location, leaving Robin in shock, because that was the powerful marine fleet that destroyed Robin's homeland. When they planned to go back and inform everyone, they ran into Smoker. He immediately attacked them, releasing his devil fruit power and capturing Brooke and Chopper. When he attempted to capture Robin, Sanji intervened, deciding to stay behind to hold him off while Robin and Law continued ahead. On Luffy's side, the new generation of pirates is still clueless about what is happening, so, they continue to be busy fighting amongst themselves. Unaware of the situation, unexpectedly, Budgie manages to find the treasure before them. 
but Luffy quickly uses his speed to punch him flying. However, Budgie remains unfazed and continues to hold onto the treasure chest, running away. At this moment, as he looks at the treasure chest, he suddenly remembers something significant. Suddenly, a warship is thrown straight into the island, causing it to collapse. This makes Budgie drop the treasure chest down below. Unforeseeably, the entire island explodes, and everyone is sent falling, seeing Luffy falling into the sea. Zoro leaps down to save him. Meanwhile, Festa realizes that Bullet has taken action and his power after 20 years in prison has become even more terrifying. At this moment, all the worst generation pirates are safe, and it's fortunate that Zoro manages to pull Luffy up in time. Just a little more and Luffy will have to say goodbye. By chance, Usopp had managed to take the treasure chest, but suddenly, he was attacked, while everyone was wondering who attacked them. The culprit, Bullet, finally revealed himself, he even captured Usopp and took the treasure chest, which made Luffy furious. Luffy immediately activated Gear 2 and launched an attack at Bullet. Unexpectedly, he took a full blow of Bullet's incredibly powerful punch, but Luffy still didn't flinch and stood up to face him again. While Mr. 3 and Vita were clueless about who this person was, Budgie informed them that Bullet was once a former crew member on Roger's ship. His strength back in the day was even compared to that of the Dark King Rayleigh. Suddenly, Mr. Mick noticed that a fleet of marine battleships was approaching rapidly. This sight made all the pirates on the island panic and flee, knowing that staying would only lead to trouble. Meanwhile, Festa was delighted as everything was going according to his plan, while the worst generation realized that the person standing before them was incredibly strong. However, Luffy was furious because he dared to attack his teammates. He said, you are the most notorious rookies of the new generation, aren't you? Whoever wants the treasure, come and fight. He immediately released his conqueror's hockey, leaving everyone shocked and overwhelmed by its power, because they realized that he is truly a monster. But Luffy is not afraid at all. Luffy also unleashed his conqueror's hockey to confront Bullet. At this moment, Bullet taunted them again, saying, what's wrong? Are you all scared now? While everyone remained silent, Luffy spoke up, your opponent is me. At this moment, Nami informed the group that they had to leave immediately. Luffy told Zoro to go ahead and leave Bullet to him. While Robin and Law made their way out, Robin accidentally bumped into Kroko Dai. Robin realized that even Kroko Dai was interested in the treasure. She knew for sure that the treasure would shake the world. Suddenly, Kroko Dai quickly approached Law and asked if he wanted to cooperate. On Sanji's side, he was still fighting against Smoker. Suddenly, Toshigi informed him that Bullet had appeared and was battling Straw Hat Luffy. Bullet then swiftly attacked Luffy, causing him great pain. In a blink of an eye, each member of the worst generation was knocked out one by one by Bullet's overwhelming strength. Despite the situation, they all tried to stand up and fight back. Luffy and Kid rushed in to throw punches at Bullet, but with a slight turn of his body, he made both of them hit each other's faces. Beiji immediately released his devil fruit power, transforming into a colossal fortress. However, all the cannonballs fired from the fortress were blocked effortlessly by Bullet. He retaliated by delivering a powerful punch to Beiji, incapacitating him. Both Hawking and Apu also launched their attacks, followed by Killer, Drake, and Oros, and finally, Kid and Luffy unleashed their strongest blows, yet, to their astonishment, their attacks seemed as insignificant as mosquito bites against Bullet's overwhelming strength. At this moment, Bullet taunted them, saying they were still inexperienced and weak. Bullet declared that he would show them his true power. With lightning speed, he attacked and sent Luffy flying. Kid confronted Bullet, asking him what he wanted. Bullet replied that he wanted to become unbeatable. As the marine battleships continued to encircle the island, Zoro's group made the decision to fight and create their own path for escape. Suddenly, Admiral Fujitora launched an attack at Zoro, on Sanji's side. They managed to escape from Smoker and regrouped with Robin. As for the worst generation pirates, they were being overwhelmed and taunted by Bullet. Bullet said that this is the true power of the future Pirate King, which immediately angered Luffy and made him activate Gear 4 state. Surprisingly, this time Luffy's punches were incredibly fast causing Bullet to continuously be hit by his attacks. But this only fueled his excitement, and he immediately retaliated against Luffy. Then, Luffy unleashed a decisive blow, and Bullet also punched him in the face, causing both of them to be knocked back. At this moment, Luffy also lost his Gear 4 state. On Festa's side, he is showcasing the battle between the five emperors Luffy and the former crew member of the Pirate King to the Underworld's top bosses. Zoro is still being blocked by Fujitora, 
who is determined to capture all the pirates present, meanwhile, Budgie, in his misfortune, is trying to find a way to escape but gets hit by Nami's Zeus, a powerful lightning attack, right on the head, at this moment, Luffy has exhausted all of his hockey, yet it still doesn't make Bullet flinch in the slightest, suddenly, he punched straight down to the ground and summoned a massive submarine, finally, he unleashed the power of his devil fruit, which allowed him to combine and transform everything as he desired, it turned out he had consumed a fusion-type devil fruit, he started transforming the steel battleship, Bullet said, those who are weak will not survive in these waters, just like that long-nosed guy, this only fueled Luffy's anger even more, he continued to brag about his absolute strength, Bullet said, calling someone a teammate only brings weakness to you, just like Whitebeard and even Roger, they were all defeated because of the limitations you call, teammates, he believes that only the strength of oneself is the key to victory, Luffy responds, as for me, I will never lose to you, at this moment, he reveals to everyone that the treasure in his possession is indeed the One Piece treasure, this immediately shocks Luffy, finally, he successfully combines and transforms into a gigantic robot, meanwhile, Zoro is busy blocking Fujitora's gravity-based attacks, but he can still counter Fujitora's attacks and even retaliate against the Admiral, at this moment, a ship is split in half, Zoro realizes that Mihawk has also arrived, when the fat guy was about to deal with the seven warlords of the sea, Perona immediately summoned ghosts to attack, causing them to feel down and demoralized, at this moment, Hankook also arrived, captivating both the marines and the pirates with her beauty, on Bullet's side, he was effortlessly beating down the worst generation pirates while boasting about his absolute power, this made Kid and Luffy annoyed, and they jumped in to intercept his attack, however, to their surprise, Bullet's punch sent them both crashing to the ground, upon seeing Luffy being defeated, Bullet was delighted as he opened the treasure chest, it turns out that inside the treasure chest was an eternal pose, which would lead them to the final island, Laugh Tale, upon seeing the eternal pose, the journalist Morgan was stunned because it was the key to finding the great treasure, One Piece, as he was about to help Luffy log out from the world, Usopp stood up to stop him, Bullet had dismissed Usopp's bullets as mere child's playthings, they transformed into sturdy ropes that coiled around his fingers, however, it still did not affect Bullet's power, and he immediately used his cannon to shoot Usopp, at this moment, Admiral Kazaru, the golden monkey, had also arrived, while Kobe and the vice admirals of the navy were surrounding the pirates, suddenly Smoker appeared and informed Hina that the navy headquarters was hiding something from them, at that moment, he noticed Budgie hiding among the pirates, so he immediately asked Budgie about what was inside the chest, on Fujitora's side, he realized there was no more time to play with Zoro, so he summoned a meteorite to gift to Zoro and then left, Zoro then leapt up and used his Santoryu technique to split the meteorite in half, Zoro realized that the meteorite was still descending towards Bartolomeo's group, luckily, Mihawk swiftly swung his sword and cut the meteorite into small pieces, meanwhile, after defeating Luffy's group, Bullet headed towards the marine forces, leading them to surround him, this only made him even more excited, suddenly, Smoker rushed in and ordered the marines to retreat because Bullet's main objective was to defeat the navy, he unexpectedly unleashed the power of his devil fruit's awakening, he could further increase the range of his devil fruit's awakening, which allowed him to assimilate an entire town and transform into a colossal monster, four vice admirals rushed in to face him, but they was defeated with just a single swing of Bullet's hand, he continued to coat his arm with hockey and delivered a powerful blow, that sent many navy and pirate forces flying, it turned out that he had always sought to surpass Roger and become invincible, far away, Luchi from CP0 was still observing the situation, the group of Smoker and Kobe was astonished to see the enormous amount of hockey that Bullet possessed, capable of enveloping even the giant creature, as the navy soldiers remained fearful, the golden monkey admiral, Kazaru, still hadn't taken any action, Suddenly, Vice Admiral Red Dog Akainu issued the order for the entire navy to execute the buster call, on the other side, Festa was thrilled with Bullet's strength and believed that he would surely surpass Roger, he even dared to challenge Sengoku to come and capture him, Festa was planning a grand extermination festival in the ocean, aiming to create a new era similar to Roger's, meanwhile, the navy was organizing a briefing about Bullet, it turned out that in his younger days, he was a soldier and was hailed as a hero, However, he was betrayed by his own comrades, leading him to become ruthless and slaughter all the civilians, since then, Bullet became a wanted man and joined the Roger Pirates, 
however, he was later captured by Sengoku and imprisoned in Impel Down. At this point, Garp comes to talk to Sengoku. They both had to admit that Bullet was a monster, always striving to surpass Roger, but the death of Roger drove him even more insane. The last time they had to resort to using the Buster Call and mobilize an entire fleet of the Navy to capture him. On Luffy's side, he was exhausted and Usopp tried to get him to leave, as their adventure couldn't stop here. Suddenly, a pillar fell towards Luffy, but Usopp jumped in to shield him. Fortunately, Brooke was able to freeze the flaming pillar in time. And Chopper also rushed over, so Usopp urged Chopper to treat Luffy first, on the side of the navy, they are still trying to resist Bullet. They received the message that Akainu had ordered the use of Buster Call to destroy this island. Staying on this island any longer would be extremely dangerous, causing all the navy to be terrified. They ran as fast as they could to get away from this place, as for Bullet, he looked at the Buster Call warships arriving, which only served to further excite him. While Smoker told Hina to lead Kobe and the others away, he decided to stay and fight. He realized that the Navy also wanted to claim the treasure chest, so he was determined to get it first to prevent the island from being destroyed. Suddenly, Sabo appeared and stopped Smoker. Smoker recognized him as Luffy's older brother, and both of them immediately unleashed their devil fruit powers and launched attacks against each other. Seeing the Marines scared and fleeing from the island, made Nami's group worried. However, she still trusted her decision to stay and wait for Luffy. Meanwhile, Hankook was deeply concerned for her husband Luffy. Suddenly, she caught sight of something red. Thinking it might be Luffy, unexpectedly, it was Budgie who appeared. As a result, he was immediately kicked away. On Chopper's side, he was trying to get Luffy to flee. But suddenly Luffy said he was fine. So he asked Chopper to take Usopp back to the Sunny first. Usopp, in tears, apologized to Luffy feeling too weak to help him, thus, Usopp collapsed from exhaustion. At that moment, Luffy decided to go back and have a fierce battle with Bullet. He immediately activated Gear 4 and launched himself at Bullet with incredible speed. Meanwhile, Sabo and Smoker were still fighting, and it seemed neither of them could gain the upper hand. Suddenly, Hankook kicked Budgie towards them as she was still searching for Luffy. At this moment, Law also instantly teleported to their location, while everyone was arguing with each other. Law proposed a plan to extract Bullet from the Metallic Giant. This plan can only be used once. If it fails, we will all be defeated. Smoker immediately refused to cooperate with the pirates. Don't want to work with them. Suddenly, they all saw Luffy rushing towards Bullet. But suddenly, he was punched and flew towards them. Seeing Luffy, Boa Hankook became smitten with him. Later, Law explained his plan to Luffy. That excited Luffy. In the end, everyone agreed to cooperate and deal with Bullet. As for Festa, seeing Luffy teaming up with the Shichibukai, the Marines, and the Revolutionary Army, make him amused, suddenly, Luffy activates Gear 4 and attacks Bullet, but still haven't heard Law's full plan, so Law had to inform everyone, first, Law will create a hole to erode Bullet's hockey, and when he appeared, they would all attack him simultaneously, Luffy still can't get close to Bullet, so he got punched and flew again. Then people started to act, suddenly, Kroko Dai also appeared and joined them in cooperation. But unexpectedly, Boa Hankook got angry. How dare you attack my husband? So she ran to attack Bullet with a powerful kick, but his hockey is too strong. Then, Kroko Dai used a sandstorm to surround him, and Law quickly transforms to help the sand enter Bullet's body. Now Luffy is back, and he blew out his arm in preparation to deal a decisive blow to Bullet. While Bullet was trying to increase his hockey, Smoker and Sabo fly in and perform a combined smoke and fire attack directly on him, causing him to lose an arm. As Bullet was about to use hockey to reattach his arm, Budgie is running to get out of this situation. Realizing that he couldn't escape in time, he threw a bomb at Bullet's arm that was falling, causing it to explode and blow away Bullet's arm. But Bullet realized that it was the move used by CP0's Luchi and he realizes that the world government is also against him. As for Festa, he was surprised, unable to believe that Bullet was weakening. However, Bullet still had one arm left, so he immediately launched an attack against them. While Law thought they had failed, Sabo encouraged everyone to trust in Luffy. It turned out that Luffy was still continuing to inflate his arm with powerful hockey. This inspired everyone to regain their spirit and continue to oppose him. All of them ran forward, using their strongest skill, Bullet continued to strengthen his hockey into the giant monster. 
the party then unleashes a combined attack, breaking through his defense. However, Bullet remained unfazed and knocked them all away with a powerful attack. Finally, it's Luffy's turn. He quickly moved towards Bullet, pulling the giant arm from behind. So, Bullet further promoted his hockey into his arm and launched a decisive blow. As their fists collided, Bullet's arm suddenly shattered, piercing through his massive armor, surprising everyone. Inside him, however, was still another cyborg. He then coated his arm with hockey, intending to deliver a decisive blow to Luffy. Unexpectedly, Usopp's seed sprouted and restrained him, and destroyed his cyborg. Seeing Bullet fall, Kroko Dai and Luchi charged in. However, they were stopped and told by Sanji and Zoro, don't bother our captain. Luffy continued to advance and unleashed a barrage of punches at Bullet, despite Bullet still being very strong. But Luffy still didn't give up and continued to fight on. So, Bullet released all of his hockey and said, I will be the one to become the Pirate King. Luffy replied, you're not worthy of becoming the Pirate King. Luffy and Bullet both threw a series of consecutive punches at each other. Surprisingly, Bullet landed a punch right on Luffy's face and proclaimed, I am the strongest in the world. Luffy replied, no one can survive alone in this vast sea. This made Bullet reminisce about the time he traveled with Roger. Although he always challenged Roger and lost, he felt joy in those moments. At this moment, Luffy regained the advantage in the battle, continuously punching Bullet in the face. Luffy declared, I am the one who will become the Pirate King. Finally, Luffy defeated Bullet with a powerful punch, sending him crashing down to the ground. Everyone was astonished to see Bullet defeated. Luffy then returned to his normal form, but he had successfully obtained the treasure chest, making him very happy. Festa realizes that his plan has failed. Luffy, curious, opens the treasure chest and finds an eternal pose leading the way to Laugh Tail. Suddenly, Luchi and Kroko Dai shifted their focus to attacking Luffy. However, to their surprise, Luffy crushed the eternal pose and said, I don't need this. Rendered them astonished. Law instantly teleported the whole group next to the sunny ship. Meanwhile, Sabo managed to find Festa. It turned out that the revolutionary army had been pursuing him, as he was responsible for creating horrific wars, therefore, Sabo immediately defeated him. Luffy's group realized they had to leave the island immediately to escape from the navy. Surprisingly, Kid and other pirates joined in, breaking through the navy's encirclement together. Suddenly, Admiral Kazaru, the golden monkey, attempted to attack them, Sabo quickly used his firepower to create a wall of flames, helping Luffy's group and the other pirates to flee. It turned out that Roger never wanted to leave behind an eternal pose pointing to Laugh Tail. He threw it into the sea, believing that someone would find one piece on their own. When they learned that Luffy had destroyed the eternal pose, it shocked everyone, as he didn't want their adventure to become predictable. So, they continued their journey. That's it for today's video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel to support Oni-chan in the upcoming videos. Thank you all for watching, lots of love.